It's impossible to sum up how personal Love, Violet is. Stories and histories are always personal, as is the harm of false myths used to demonize. Growing up in a family of evangelical pastors and missionaries, my only words or images for queerness were the horror stories of male pedophiles pouring from our Christian radio station. I longed to be good, loved, family. How could I be queer? I couldn't. So I tried not to be. I suppressed and repressed until it was choking me. And then, in my 30s, not even divorce or resigning a faculty position or facing my very religious family could stop me. I never felt more liberated, joyful, myself. But unlike many kids today, when I saw the disgust disfigure my grandmother's usually loving face, I was grown, physically safe, surrounded by support. So many kids are not. So I wrote Love, Violet directly to them, around the politics and terms and slurs. I wanted to break the silence with a love story. I wanted to give kids words for themselves like magnificent, dream, adventure, and the word for how we thrive together. I wrote the truest story I could about what young love feels like, that awe, being dazzled, and I wove in the gender expressions of many I love and myself. Growing up, I hadn't seen gender nonconforming gals portrayed as tender, or feminine ones as sporty or queer, or queer people of color honored ever. Yet there we were, and now here we are with Charlene's evocative, honoring images, and a story about the most human thing we do, love. But not everyone wants to acknowledge our shared humanity. Not surprisingly, Love, Violet and several other rainbow picture books have been named in a lawsuit seeking to quote-unquote protect kids. Meanwhile, a trans team has already left the same district because of death threats. Protection? This is something else. Dehumanization. Unmaking our human stories. And it's a little weird for me because I used to be that kid carrying handwritten notes to school, asking to skip activities for religious reasons. I know this earnestness. It's likely very sincere. But how can one be excused from our shared humanity? What of the queer children in these families? Their kids' peers witnessing themselves described as dangerous monsters. As I wrote in an essay for We Need Diverse Books, erasing or defacing any group's humanity is nothing short of a genocidal wish. A task easily outsourced to the playground school boards and legislators, parents and police, frightened folks with guns. And too often, the instruction to not exist hits home. These stakes are so high. And that's why we're here, throwing everything we have into this work, especially for our kids of color, our Native and trans kids. And you know what? In that same Maryland community, members of the Rainbow Defense Coalition have organized to gather at drag story times and pride events to physically, actually protect kids. While hate groups scream at children, punch the air with fists, these neighbors pop open rainbow parasols, churn up the music loud, and with their bodies and joy, they shield and surround these kids with safety with love. They say, soak up these stories, darlings. Drink in these pictures. So when the stones fly, you'll already know who you are. Beautiful, precious family. And that's what you do every day. Thank you for sharing this mission, our books, your hearts. Our kids need you. They need you. They need you. 
Thank you.